<laughs> Hi everybody, do you want the same parts on your car that I used on Cruise Missile? Don't forget to check out davescustomparts.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, so we're just gonna jump into this one. I know everyone is patiently waiting for me to get this car to the dyno to see what kind of power the uh, bigger turbo made. Here's the thing. It's not as simple, just put the turbo on and go. There are a lot of little things you need to learn along the way, which is why I'm not just pumping videos out about putting this turbo on because I want everyone to know what you're in store for. I have the turbo on, the car's completely done. I've actually driven it a few times. It's running incredibly lean. There's a few reasons for this. One. It's potentially the tune because the air fuel ratio might not be adjusted under full throttle, but I'm not going to blame the tuner until I know stuff on the car is set up correctly. Problem number two, the wastegate actuator might have the incorrect preload. Now in order for me to get this car to go back up to at least even 20 pounds of uh, boost pressure, I had to put a ton of preload on the wastegate actuator. You guys know if you check my website, I sell wastegates with the exact preload needed to get the maximum amount of power that you can get out of the factory turbo. Okay, everyone, so I wanted to throw this into this video because we're talking about wastegates. So this is a wastegate actuary that you would typically buy when you needed to replace the one that's on your turbo. What most people do not realize is wastegate actuators actually come in pieces. Even though they show a picture of these things in one piece, when you buy them, this is how they arrive. A lot of times when someone buys this, it basically just sits in your garage or sits in your basement or the wrong one was purchased because you have a generation two cruise and you buy a generation one and it sits and you've had it for so long, it's out of warranty and you can't do anything about it. So what I do is, is you can contact me. You can order one of these through my website, supercruises.com. I will receive the correct one for you. You just tell me the year of your car. When it comes in, they come in in pieces. Uh, so for example, a lot of people who buy these don't actually have the tools to disassemble them or even know the torque specs to put these things together. So if you stick this rod in there, a lot of people actually put it in backwards, believe it or not. You think you put it in this way and then you can't get the adjustment properly or you put it in there and you, you know, you put the rod in, you tighten it down, but what you don't realize is the piston inside is just spinning and now you're causing wear to the piston. There, there, there's a lot of issues you can have. You can have leaks around the seam. You can have leaks at the uh, actuator port for the vacuum. I'm uh, sorry, this is actually a pressure line you could have leaks up here you could be losing boost at this thing and not even realize it because in your mind you're like oh let me just put this thing on and you don't realize how this thing actually operates so what i'll do is i'll receive it i'll disassemble the piston i will test the spring pressure with my uh, spring pressure tool i will pressurize the piston make sure there's no leaks i will assemble this i'll actually take it apart and i'll assemble the rod it'll be nice and tight so it won't come loose and then what i'll do is i'll put it on my turbo I will set the preload for your turbo for you. And when you get it to your car, all you're really gonna need is a wrench for the two nuts, and then you just have to pull the pin and pop it on. One last thing when I'm finished assembling these is I will also set the opening pressure up. So for example, depending on how much boost you're running, uh, I could set the pressure up to be like a five pound pressure where this, this factory one's actually set up for about a five pound pressure. I could set your pressure up to be about 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 25 pounds. Let me know, basically, let me know what you're doing with the car and I'll be able to figure out what kind of pressure you need for your actuator. Now that I'm messing around with the larger turbo, we need a different preload and we need a stronger spring. So what I'm doing today is I'm gonna change the spring, figure out a new preload in order to actuate the actuator. And then the third problem is my spark plug gap. With the factory turbo basically maxed out, I was running a 0.031, it's like 31 thousandths of an inch. Uh, that was the gap basically from the diode to the arc tip. Uh, I, I think that's what it's called. So basically, uh, Bad News Racing asked me to use a smaller gap when I put the turbo in. Even with the smaller gap, I'm getting what's known as spark blowout. Wait a minute, what's spark blowout? If you look at this diagram, this is what a spark plug should look like when it's functioning correctly. However, spark blowout is caused when you increase the boost from the turbo on a turbocharged engine. The gap on your spark plug plays a big role in this. When you have a gap that's too big and you have that additional boost, the spark ends up getting incredibly erratic and it has a hard time keeping a steady spark. So you have to close the gap on your spark plug, giving your spark plug a chance to have the spark come back. When you get blowout, what happens is you start losing power, you start getting misfiring, 
Under wide open throttle, the car feels like it has less power than it should, which is why the gap on your spark plug is so important. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the gap on the spark plugs to like a 0 0.022 or 0 0.024. Uh, first of all, we'll see how hard it is to get the gap to squish down. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt today. So we're gonna change the gap. We're gonna do the, uh, uh, the wastegate modification. And then we're going to uh, road test the car, see what kind of air fuel ratio we have because the car was running incredibly lean. And then uh, hopefully it'll bring the ratio back. What I'm hoping is the gap was igniting the um, air and fuel at the wrong time and that's why the car was running so lean and if the car runs at the right air fuel ratio i can bring it to the dyno if it does not i'm going to park it and then i'm going to bring my miata because i'm going to be putting a supercharger on that <laughs> And it would be cool to uh, to run that on the dyno, just see what kind of before numbers I'll get, and then after the supercharger, just like I'm doing with this. But if the car runs right, we'll get it to the dyno tomorrow. I literally have one more day, or I'm wasting money on a dyno run, which is why I chose to bring another car. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna set you guys up, and then we'll go from there. So we need to get this from basically 28 thousandths of an inch down to, I'm gonna go with 22. So basically on here, you see a measurement. Uh, what I wanna do is get that measurement smaller. So here, let's go with 23. So here's what you're gonna see. This sh basically will fit inside the gap on these spark plugs, okay? It's gonna fit right in. What we need to do is close this gap so this stops being able to fit in there. And that's how we know the gap is smaller. The only thing that I can come up with to help us do that would be sticking them in a vise. I don't know if that's a mistake, but I don't have the little tool for doing this. And I'm trying this out for the first time. I have no idea if this is a good idea, but I think in theory it should work. Also, if you're gonna do this, probably wear some safety goggles. Basically, what I want to do is slowly tighten this down until the feeler gauge doesn't fit anymore. So let's see, the gap is now a 21. Uh, let me see, I might be able to use the feeler gauge to make this a little wider. All right, just fits into a 22, so that's what we're gonna go after. All right, spark plugs are now gapped better. Let's get these things back in and uh, get the car on the road. All right, I just want to start this up to make sure it runs and uh, if the wastegate operates.
Okay, so from the driver's seat at idle, revving the engine, it actually all feels pretty good. The air fuel ratio at idle looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, even though it's raining, we're gonna take this thing for a spin and see if I can get a good air fuel ratio while wide open throttle. The other day, basically when I would go full throttle, the air fuel ratio would be like a 14 to one, which is incredibly lean. Every once in a while, I'd see like a 13 and a half to one, which is still lean. I really wanna see in the 12s, closer to like a 12.1 to one ratio. Uh, I have a gauge hooked up inside the car, which there should be a video on the channel showing how to put an air fuel ratio gauge into this car. Uh, if there is, I'll put a link up in the corner for you guys. So let's take this thing for a spin. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, so I wanted to pause right here and end this video off in a different way than what I normally do. You're going to see that I'm in the middle of tinkering with this wastegate again. I kept changing the preload. I started noticing that while I was driving the car, I would hit a boost wall and I got to the point where I kept playing with the preload and I got it so tight and I got the boost to come up so high that even though I was hitting 25 PSI in first and second gear, whenever I would hit uh, uh, third, fourth, fifth gear, even sixth gear, I would hit a boost wall of like 15 PSI. I kept changing the preload on the turbos, uh, wastegate, and then the, the, the wall would go a little bit higher, it would hit 18. Change the preload again, it would hit 20. It got to the point where I had so much preload on the turbo that I was worried about messing the turbocharger up, so I wanted to just stop and then uh, basically figure out what is causing my boost wall issue. So, I figured out what was causing that boost wall issue after I took the car to the dyno. But prior to going to the dyno, I was actually able to get a lot of power out of the car. You saw in the video, I was messing with the spark plugs in the wastegate. I, I fixed that uh, mid-range hesitation the car was producing. The car actually has a lot of power. If I didn't have an air fuel ratio gauge or a boost gauge, you would not notice that anything was even wrong because the car is very powerful. However, since I took it to the dyno and figured out what was wrong with that boost wall, the car is way more powerful than it was before. So I don't want to let you guys know what's going on ahead of time because I think it'll ruin the video series. But since, since this point in the video, taking the car to the dyno, figuring out what was causing that boost wall problem, I'm able to get the car up to 30 PSI in pretty much all gears. Even in the higher gears, I was able to hit uh, relatively close to 30 PSI. I figured out what was wrong with causing the boost wall. I figured out what was wrong with the air fuel ratio. And, uh, and, and pretty soon, uh, I know a couple people are testing my methanol injection system because you contacted me through the website. I'm going to have some really cool videos on how to get even more power out of the car safely. Well, as safe as a modified car can be. I have some really cool stuff coming. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I appreciate you guys supporting me because supporting me allows me to do dumb things with my car that let me basically figure out all the problems. So when you do this to your car, you don't have to worry about stuff. At least that's what I'm trying to do. I try to support the community as much as possible. Uh, those of you that are in my membership, you're sort of in my inner circle. You always know what's going on with Cruise Missile and you always know what's coming up on the channel uh, because you guys support me a little bit more than everyone else. But at the same time, everyone who supports me, I keep in touch with all of you as much as possible. I just, certain people get more information because you're part of the membership. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everything you do. Uh, people who want to be in the membership, I've noticed that if you're using an iPhone, it doesn't show up on your iPhone. You have to actually go on a desktop if you want to join the membership. I do try my hardest putting links in everywhere, but if, you just, if you're not on a desktop and you have an iPhone, you can't do it. But if you want to, just go on your desktop. And uh, everyone else who uh, keeps in touch, supports me, donates on my live streams, you guys are great. The more support, the better, because uh, the more support I get, it allows me to create parts for the community that don't actually exist. So that's the point of the channel. That's everything I'm doing with the car. Like I do everything for you guys. So based on what you tell me to do, that's why I'm making these videos. Uh, so thanks again, everyone. Have a nice day. And if you ever need anything, please feel free to contact me at uh, supercruises.com. Uh, anybody who's in the membership, you guys have a direct email, so you guys can email me there too. And some of you guys have my cell phone, so, you know, I don't mind you calling. Uh, have a nice day, everyone.